in the name of my ancestors. <sighs> Peace, fire, and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I'm the host of this particular program, known here as the Mighty, 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 uh, Angel Snub Number Seven. I am your brother. And hopefully your friend, Talik Even Ra. I just want to share some thoughts. This is not a conclusion to anything. It's not a teaching. It is just something like back in the early 1990s. Arsenio Hall used to say things to make you say hmm so let us or allow me to share a little hmm with us in these few minutes that I am so honored that you allow me to speak with you it just so happened I was flipping clicking through the uh, channels of the uh, cable or or satellite, whatever that's here, I don't I don't know what it is, but I was watching the beginning of this movie, <clears throat> and this movie was based upon Greek mythology. It was talking about the gods, Zeus, and Aphrodite, and, and uh, Apollo, and these gods, Mount Olympus. That's what it was based upon, Greek mythology. And in Greek mythology, you have the gods. I want us to, see, I want you to, to think with me and try to relate this to ourselves in modern times or in real time because we many of us believe in God we might not believe in God but it's the same concept I want I want you to listen very carefully so that you can say hmm these gods, according to this movie, it said that these gods created man or the human being. I don't know. It never said really what the purpose of creating men was for these gods. But it seemed as though these gods were vain they had some type of, uh, they were arrogant and they just loved the feeling or the fact that they had this power over somebody else. These gods, they, their powers was enhanced by the emotion of men. So they caused their men or man, these slaves, they wanted them to worship them all the time. They fed off emotional energy. Look, 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 look. The God feeds off emotional energy. I need to step back because I, I skipped a verse. In the creation of the gods, there were various positions for each god. Zeus had a position, Aphrodite, Apollo, everybody had a position upon Mount Olympus. But one person got left out, and that was Hades. Hades was unable to get a position on Mount Olympus and Hades was sent to the underworld. 
sent to the underground. And Hades became a symbol of death and destruction, hatred. So while the gods above fed off the emotion of happiness and love and whatever you want to call it, Hades under the ground fed off the emotions of sorrow, treachery, betrayal, jealousy, and envy. And Hades did not like this. Because Hades was a god, Hades wanted to be above with everybody else. But for some reason, these cast Hades into what we call hell. Now, everything, well, this, let me say this. Who created these gods? What gave these gods life? And what is the purpose of these gods? What is the purpose of God? Just to sit around and front power? Look at what I can do. I can make a, a lightning bolt. I can shake the earth. Look what I can do. What is the, see, what is the purpose of God? Besides being your slave master. Because for a slave, that's all you can see. As far as God is concerned. Is that God is some kind of a slave master. And you were born and created to serve these gods or this God. But what gave these gods life? What gave these gods power? And why do they have the right just because they created man? Why man has to be a slave to these gods? But these gods was created by some power. And they are not anybody's slave. They are up in the clouds fronting their power. So this eventually became a problem for the gods because men began to think with their brains, began to realize that these gods were vain, that something that these gods have problems with ego, they were jealous, these gods got a problem. I'm no longer going to be a slave. I'm, I don't care if you created me or not. I'm not going to no longer serve you. That made the gods above very, very angry. Because they thrive. They thrive off the emotion of the slave. See, look, look at us today. Every Sunday, every, every Wednesday night or whatever, you pray. 24 hours a day and you clap and sing song for your God because the gods live off your emotion but then it says in this particular story that men became smart they became wiser and began to see these gods as the crap that they really were see uh oh see see but you don't see oh wow See, I keep saying see because see means that your eyes become awakened to the reality of the things that we have been taught. This is what the gods decided to do. They knew that Hades wanted to be part of the godhood. So they decided to try to make space for Hades if he used his power, which is of hate. Misery, suffering, and death. Sin give the man hell for disobedience to the God. Why are you going to punish me, God? Because I really did something? I broke some type of law? No. Because I decided to refuse to feed your vanity, your arrogance. So now you want to punish me because now I see the value in myself. Yes, you created me. Yes, you gave me life. But I understand my own value. I understand who I am. And the men decided, man, the human being decided they would no longer worship these gods. So punishment, so the punishment for not serving God 
was they decided to unleash Hades upon the men. But see, all is not in vain because there was somebody from within the human being to be born that would have the power to challenge the gods and free people from gods that were unjust. Gods who acted and behaved like slave masters. Because anybody, anybody that has life should respect other life. It is unnatural in this world of reality for anybody to be a slave. You are not nobody's slave. I don't care what kind of power some God has. I don't care if some God created you or whatever. This story tells me, this story tells us that we should find the value in ourselves. And we should not be a slave to nobody. They live off the vanity, the emotion, the emotional that the emotional spirit that we give when we pray and when we worship these beings or this God that don't even deserve it and God don't do nothing for you. I love what Elijah Muhammad always teach. He said, why do we love the Caucasian people? Because they give us nothing. Why do you love God? Because God don't do nothing for you. You make up stuff. Oh, God did this for me. If you didn't do it, it wouldn't get done. That's the bottom line. There's a saying that God helped those who helped themselves. If I am helping myself and I am being successful at helping myself, why are we giving credit to God? That's fairy tale stuff. That's the same thing like what we do every December. When we go out and go into debt and buy Christmas presents for everybody, talking about Santa Claus, when the reality is it was us. Why are we so shamed? Why do we feel as though it's not right that we give ourselves credit for the things that we do? We want to give the credit to these non-living something beings, vain things running around. So I just wanted to bring that to us. That's just something to think about. That the people began to see the flaw and these gods was not as perfect as they thought that they were. But they thought they were because you kept they kept you in a slave-like condition and you didn't know any better. Think about it. Jot down your comments. This is your brother Talik Ra. This was and is the reality's temple on earth. my ancestors <sighs> peace forever and always and welcome to another edition of the realities temple on earth internet ministry of course I am the host of this particular program known here on YouTube and many other places Vimeo daily motion Facebook I'm known as the mighty 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 Mm. Angel Snub Nub 7. I am your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Even Ra. I would like to speak with those of us who claim, I would like to say, claim that we are or have awakened mentality. We are not of the dark European mind. We are not of the Sambo mind. We are trying to find our African or black conscience. And this in itself is a wonderful thing. However, for me, I understand that black and African these are ideas and concepts that was devised by the conqueror in order to divide and conquer, in order to create a slave. So it is not a shock to me 
that we can have a black conscious mentality, we can have an African mentality, or that we've grown or we claim to gone beyond the mentality of the oppressor, but yet it's still, after all this time, we have moved nowhere. We still sit in a slave-like condition. That's because we don't want to listen to nobody. The answers to our problems come from within our people, but we can't be flexible enough to accept these answers because we already believe we have the answer, but if you had the answer, then why are you still a slave? Why are you still calling yourself that which the conqueror called you? The conqueror created these concepts of race. You and I, our people, never called themselves black and they never called themselves African, but we embrace these ideas that come from out the conqueror trying to make them positive and they positively keep you in a slave-like condition because that's what they were designed for, trying to reach back into a past that you never were part of, regardless to your relations, no matter to who you believe you came from, that past does not belong to you. Your past and your history began once we began or once we were placed on the soils of North America. That's where you began and you should be proud and you should be happy and you should begin to understand who and what you are right now, not what somebody else was back then. And that's some of the problem that you're going to have dealing with our people because our people are not like they were when we, our people, were slaves. Or during the time of Jim Crow and segregation. The black man and woman in America, those of you who are in the struggle for, for the time being, because see, being in this struggle myself, even on YouTube, I seen y'all come and you go because this is a fight. This is a struggle that we've been dealing with for 400 some years. And if you stay for a little while or you can handle the struggle to the day you die, I will thank you whatever contribution that you've given to this fight because it's not an easy fight. It's not an easy fight because the people of whom you're trying to liberate. Now, oh, the people of whom, <clears throat> excuse me, I throw it a little sore. <clears throat> the people of whom you're trying to liberate, the people of whom you're trying to uplift, love the people who keep them down. This has never happened in the history of the human being, it is very rare. I don't know, maybe it has happened before, but it has never happened to the extent where you have a, a group of people, no matter how they are treated, they are mistreated, abused, murdered. They love the people. They marry them. They praise them. They wait like a dog at their table waiting for them to throw them scraps so they can say, I'm the first black to be an astronaut. I'm the first black to be president. I'm the first black to do this. I'm the first black to be that. How you have always been first because we come from the original people of this planet. We were the first to do many things. And you're not proud of that first because you don't know of that first and don't care because their world is that of their slave master and their children. So many of them, those of us who have awakened minds, we become frustrated and angry when we should not because this is the only life they know. The only life they know of being a pet, 
of being a slave. This is all that they know. And some of us know better. But we have this attitude. If you can't beat them, then join them. And some of, of, of these so-called Africans, these so-called black people, they have joined the enemy to keep you in the slave-like condition. Because if the people rise up out of that condition, and since they join the enemy, then it's going to affect their lifestyle. So when you see a Sambo, when you see what we call Uncle Tom, when we see these people I call dark Europeans, when we see these black skin Oreo cookies, when we see them fight against us the way they do, you must understand that you're messing and we're messing with their livelihood because they joined the side of the enemy. 400 years we have been here. Don't you understand that some black folks, we are tired. And we have, it's like climbing out of a hole. You get stuck in a hole, and as you climb out, sometimes you might get to a certain point, and then you slip right back down. And pretty soon, you grow tired, and you just give up. And you lay there and die. Our people are tired of scratching and crawling and trying to get out the hole. So they have decided to lay down at the bottom and die. And anything that is dead is moved by the living. So the Chinese or the Arabs or the Caucasian, anybody can come down in the hole since they are living and move that dead body any kind of way that they want to. And for those of us who still have some life in our body, they start striking us with a stick. Why don't you, why don't you die too? I've seen them come and I've seen them go. This is a, this is a weary battle. This is a hard fight. And that's why there's so much hatred toward me. That's why there's so much hatred to, to, toward so many other brothers and sisters because they, no matter how much they punch, no matter what they do, we refuse to fall down. We refuse to die. Why don't you die like the rest of them? Die like the other Sambos. Die like the other Uncle Tom. Die like the other dark Europeans. Why don't y'all die, man? It's not meant for us to die. Because a new world must come into existence. And that new world will flow from the brain, from what so-called the soul of the black man and woman born in America, the descendants of slaves. It's coming from you. The real new world order is coming and they know it, but they, the wicked, those who are in power now want to be able to design and control it. But it's not for them. It is you. And when you hear my voice, when you hear the voice of so many other brothers and sisters of what we call black conscience, those who have this desire to try to try to find who we are, return to ourselves, when we hear those words, they know what we're talking about is true. Just because they reject it don't mean that they don't know. They know that it's true. But they love the oppressor because this is the only life they know. They also fear these people. Now, they might take a gun and shoot you. They might take a gun and shoot me. But the real enemy, they won't take up a gun because that's their bread and butter. They're not that stupid. Stop talking about my bread and butter. The first thing they'll tell you, stop talking about white folks. Leave the white man alone because that's their world. It's the only thing they may know. So for those of us who claim to be awake, then you have a responsibility I have a responsibility 
you have a responsibility to unite and join together and create a sign or an example, a symbol of the real new world order. But like I told you, that can't happen because you still holding on to that which no will no longer exist. Black and African, that's of the past. Let it go. Find who you are. You need to learn who you who you are today and create a new world. Understand who you are. Until you do that, you're going to continue to stay right here where you are because new dirt is not going to be allowed to come into the new house. If you want to stake, if you want to rot, then it's best you stay right here where we're at. Think about it. Black leadership. Think about it if you really claim that you are awake. Open up your mind to new ideas and new concepts. Let us really break 1,000% the shackles of slavery. Thank you for listening. This is your brother, Tali Gimara. This was and is. Jot down your comments. The reality's temple on earth. In the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always. And welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am the host of this particular program, known here on the internet as the mighty, 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 uh, Angel Snub Number Seven. I am your brother, and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. The topic that I've chosen for these few minutes is simply black leadership has failed. And many of us, when we hear those words, black leadership has failed, it brings a smile to our, to our face. Because we don't believe that we are part of black leadership. When you say that black leadership has failed, we automatically assume that black leadership is perhaps Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson, Brother Louis Farrakhan, those who are the CEOs of the Urban League and NAACP, those who are the preachers and the pastors of some big church or whatever. So when we say that black leadership has failed, we smile because we feel as though we have nothing to do with that. They failed and that has nothing to do with me. We always say if we had better leadership, if the leadership was like Malcolm X, or if the leadership was like Noah Juali or Marcus Garvey or somebody in the past, how well we would be doing. Well, they existed. And we did well for a little while, but something happened. Black leadership has failed. Why does black leadership fail? And exactly who is black leadership? Black leadership is more than Al Sharpton. Black leadership is more than Louis Farrakhan. Black leadership is any of us whose eyes have come open, who supposed to know better. Because if black leadership has failed, somebody must know enough to judge them to determine that they have failed. So if Louis Farrakhan is a failure, Al Sharpton is a failure. Those of whom we view as black leadership is failed and you know that they have failed, then you have the mentality that you should step up to the plate and take over that leadership role. But instead you sit back in the cut and you judge others and you become arrogant because you don't feel as though when we say black leadership has failed, 
that that group of people involves you. But black leadership is anybody, regardless if you famous or whether you are somebody unknown. Those who know, and since you can judge Farrakhan, since you can judge Sharpton, since you can judge Jackson, since you can judge so many people, then you also have failed. Because even though you're not famous, within your circles, what have you done? What are you doing to be successful? Because if you are an example of that success and you are successful, then I'm pretty sure those with open minds will see your success and gravitate and be attracted to you because there is a yearning to change the condition of black people in America. And if you have that answer, let us get behind you and let us support you like we did these of whom you say have failed. But instead, you sit around and you make mockery. The first black leader in our community is the adults, the so-called adults. If you are over 18 years old, you are considered an adult. An adult has the responsibility to cause the change in the community. The reason why the black community has not changed, the reason why we continue to live in this horrid condition is because those who are considered adults are not acting and behaving as adults. Every Saturday night, every Friday night, Every Sunday morning, you will see these adults drunk in the bars and the strip clubs of this nation, drunk and doing drugs and involved in all kinds of filthy and nasty, vile behaviors. That's what these adults are. They are trying to continue to be the child of which they should have left a long time ago. But as a child, they tried to act like an adult. And then they find out that being an adult is not that much fun. So when they become an actual adult, they try to go back and return back to their childhood. But that's not how it works. The black man and woman of America, you and I, we have become very, very sick people. And when we become drunk and when we use drugs, it takes away, it gives us a reason not to accept the responsibility for having an open mind to give and present to our communities proper leadership. Thus, you do not see proper leadership in the family home. The parents are the first black leaders. You are the first ones to influence and guide your babies. And you have failed. You see our children out in the streets gangbanging, our young girls prostituting, looking like prostitutes, whoremonging. You see our babies doing all kinds of things because they did not have proper parents, whether that parent was male or female. The children are out in the streets doing all kinds of wacky and disgusting things. They are lost because they did not have proper leadership in the home. What are the leaders doing? The leaders are sitting on their ass doing nothing, talking, running their mouth, have a lot to say. You can judge what others are trying to do, but you yourself, you don't, you don't do anything at all. But you are a leader. But see, that's because you thought that you were not a leader. But see, you just as you and I, no matter as long as you are an adult person, you become a leader. You become a leader of those who are less intelligent than you are. You have become, you become a protector and a defender for the younger people. Now, this raises the question that always come to me. These black men tell me that they are the leaders. They want to be the leaders in their household. They are too weak to become leaders in their own household. And they have failed to become leaders in their community. They say that they are providers, that they are protectors. But you see nothing that they protect. You see nobody they protect. You see nothing of substance that they bring as a provision or provide. 
anybody can come into the black community at any time and they can have your women, but these same women are supposed to respect you, but you can't protect them from nobody. You don't provide for them. You don't give them jobs. You don't protect their children. Anybody can come here in the black community and do anything they want, but you want the respect of being this man. You will not get that respect from these women and you will not get it from me because you fail to be a black leader. You fail to do what you claim you're supposed to be. And the reason why you fail to do what you claim to be is because the bottom line is you must challenge another man for that position. And the man that is controlling your women, controlling your children, that is at the root of keeping your people in the condition they are in is the ones who kidnapped us 400 some years ago and you are afraid of that power you're afraid to die you're afraid to sacrifice you're afraid to do as a protector what is necessary in order to do what is necessary to bring and uplift your people up out of this slave-like condition and the reason why is because you are a slave you still have a slave mentality. And then our children, and I want to bring this to our to conclusion, to those of you children, regardless to what your elders do, regardless to the current black leadership, to sit back and just complain about the elders didn't do this and the elders doing that, then if you know that the elders have failed, then you must do something to change the condition. Since they won't, then you have to. Otherwise, as time goes on, you yourself become an elder. And those babies that you're producing that come behind you will look at you and, and say to you the same thing that you are saying about so-called black leadership right now. What will you do any different? See? So let us not get arrogant. Let us not get all high and mighty like we are better. And let us, like they tell us all the time, let us stop playing victim. Let us use our brains to solve the problem. Let us accept as an adult our position as a black leader. Black leadership is more than one person from a church. More than one person from an organization. Black leadership encompasses single people and those of whom you affect that's around you and when we properly affect those in our own little baby little tiny circle that will help those who are on a what we might view as a higher level than we are because the bottom line and the ultimate solution and the ultimate goal is the upliftment and the changing of the condition of our communities so that we can grow and be like anybody else on this planet or in this country. Do you understand? So don't get the big head like, oh, black leadership has failed. Because if black leadership has failed, then you and I, no matter how little we are, we are also included because any adult is a black leader, big or small. And if black leadership has failed, then we all have failed. So we need to go back to the drawing board and begin to understand why we have failed and then work from there. Or are you content in your, in your failure? And if you're content in your failure, then we need to shut the hell up and just enjoy the ride. Thank you for listening. Jot down your comments. This is your brother, Talib Keeping Ra. This was and is the Reality's Temple on Earth. In the name of my ancestors, <sighs> peace, father, and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Tip on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am the host of this particular program, known here on the internet as the mighty, 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 mm, angel snub number seven. I am your brother, 
and hopefully your friend Talik Ebin Ra. The descendants of slaves born in America. In fact, the so called black man and woman around this earth, all of us who are interconnected in some form or manner, we are in trouble. We are in dire need. And if we were legally in trouble, then we would need a lawyer. We need a defense attorney. Why does the so-called descendants of slaves born in America, why do you need, why do I need a defense attorney? Why do we need a lawyer to represent us? It is because daily it never stops the accusations the mockery the slander the libel the hatred towards those of us who are african descent it never stops somebody is always talking about us trying to make mockery of us trying to keep us down and out trying to do hurt and cause extreme harm to us all kinds of ways and this is expected from the racist people but also from some of our own people that look like us that talk like us that act like us but they hate us so we are in a position where the situation is so serious that we need legal representation. We need somebody to speak for us and we have no money. So we need a public defender. We need somebody that will defend us free of charge. Somebody that will look out for our own benefit because it comes from their heart that they want to see us get real justice, real equality. We gain what many call human rights among the so-called civilized nation or among the civilized people. The black man and woman of America in this country and around the earth every day unless we are brown nosing them they are talking about us like a dog. So somebody, I hope, would stand up and say something to defend us. And in the past, we had our champions. We had Malcolm X that stood. We had Martin Luther King that stood. We had Elijah Muhammad, Nat Turner. So many of our greats. Who's going to stand today? Why do you need a defense attorney? Now I want y'all to listen to me. Why do you need and I need a defense attorney? Not only do you need a defense attorney to counter the allegations and accusations and the prosecution of others, but you need a defense attorney to protect you. <coughs> Listen to me. To protect you from yourself. Anybody who has been in legal trouble knows that you can run your mouth and you can do things that's detrimental to your defense. So you need a good, competent lawyer to protect you from yourself. There are many people, if they did not, did not open their mouth, if they got a, a competent attorney before they began messing around with the police, they would not be in the trouble that they were in. But because they began to act on their own without competent counsel, true advice from somebody who is concerned about their situation, then their trouble gets worse. And the trouble that the black man and woman in America has gotten worse because we think we know 
our situation and we don't. That's why it took somebody else to tell us what's going on. We really don't know. You need somebody to protect you from yourself because brothers and sisters, we talk but we really don't understand our situation. We know a little about slavery. We know a little about Jim Crow. We know a little bit of this, a little bit of that. But do you truly understand the situation that you are in? No, you don't. So there must be. Somebody must be raised. And this is what the racist Caucasian people and their symbols fear. There must be raised a the ultimate defense attorney. Y'all in religion call that person the coming of the Messiah. And actually... This Messiah is more than one person. They fear the rise of a certain part of the population that will bring defense to the oppressed, to the poor. Who is speaking for the poor in this election? Who is speaking for the black people in this election? Nobody is promising the black America nothing. Obama or Romney or anybody else ain't promising black folks nothing. And ain't none of these people promising nothing to the poor. Who is going to speak for the poor? Y'all always talking about Martin Luther King Jr. this. He was the Prince of Peace. And y'all use Martin Luther King anytime that you want for your own purpose. But Martin Luther King stood for black folks because black people are oppressed and that did not stop and it has not stopped. And Martin Luther King stood for the poor. None of you are standing for the poor. You degrade the poor and make mockery of those who are poor, those who are disfranchised. And that's what the Jesus stood for. Jesus stood for the oppressed. Jesus stood for the poor, the disfranchised, the down and out. Y'all are faking hypocrites. Now they tell me, because I enjoy speaking for the oppressed, I don't mind speaking for the poor. I don't mind speaking for those who are done unjust. And they tell me all the time, oh, wow, the only reason, <clears throat> listen, the only reason why you speak the way you do is because you're poor. The only reason why you speak the way you do because you have made nothing of your life. So in other words, if you give me money, you think that if you gave me a million dollars, or if I have a good job or whatever you think my life is supposed to be, then you think that I would not speak in behalf of the defenseless, the oppressed, and the poor. Well, why don't you try it? Give me the million dollars. Give me the 500,000. Give me the 40,000. See if I sell out. See, that's your problem. See, you want to try to talk about me because that's you. You the sellout. You the hypocrite. You the liar. The scriptures of the Bible gives us a story. And it talks about how the devil approached this person called Jesus. And the devil told Jesus, look at all this. And the, and the devil showed Jesus all this material thing. I can give you this and I can give you that. And Jesus told the devil, I'm not interested. Get behind me, Satan. And that's what I tell y'all every day. And you don't understand. Get behind me, Satan. I'm not interested in your material. I don't care nothing about all these, what you call success. What you deem to be success is material things. I don't give a damn about your house. I don't give a damn about your car and your paper worthless money. I don't care. What's the sense of me being rich? What's the sense of me being happy when I'm surrounded by, by people that are unhappy, that are miserable in their lives, that suffer oppression day in and day out? They don't get a chance because if somebody's going to be rich, if somebody got to be on top, somebody got to be on the bottom to serve them. That's common sense. So actually what you want is a slave. And nobody on this planet should be a slave. I don't want to see slaves of human beings. And I don't want to see 
slaves of animals. I want to see everybody given a fair chance and treated like they are living, like they all have great value. So what have the Christians done? What have the Muslims done? What have the uh, Jews done? You were given a chance by your God. And you were to gain great reward. But all of you sold your soul to the devil. Because you deem success. Your idea of success is everything that your Jesus. Everything that your Muhammad. Everything that Moses all these prophets. They were against this materialism. That you enjoy. That's your success. You're being a braggart. I'm greater and better. And you could care less about the poor man sleeping in the mud. The poor woman selling her body on the street. The crack fiend. Ain't nobody talking about that. You have Romney and Obama. What about the sicknesses that are in American life? Nobody cares. You only care about yourself because you think that you're better. So you need somebody like me that you think that is less that you can talk about. But see, you get angry because when you hear that voice of real truth, it breaks your, who it breaks you down. You thought you was better, but ain't nothing better than true freedom, justice, and equality. So black man and woman of America, we need a good defense attorney. I want to be your defense attorney. There are many of us who are good defense attorneys. We're not going to sell you out for no money. We're not going to sell you out for pieces of silver and be a Judas to you. We're here to fight for you if you support your lawyer. Have confidence in your lawyer. Bring the case and let us win and keep you out of jail and give you self-respect. Make you feel good about being the man and the woman you are without Material things that have to support you to make you feel like you are somebody. Jump down your comments. This is your brother Talib Ibn Ra. This was and is the reality's temple on earth. An opportunity to rebuild New York and New Jersey. There is no rebuilding for the dark people. And the dark people who you kidnap, they actually, some of them, help you do your Dirt. They join forces with you. I want to remind black folks, all you to the uh, goody two shoes, many so called African Americans, you help kill Native American people. You help the Caucasian destroy Native American people, and don't get the big head. Native American person because some of y'all helped track down slaves. Some of y'all on the reservation, you own slaves. So everybody is all messed up. But don't start smiling Caucasian people because y'all the one that kicked it all off. Africans and Native American people had no conflict. Africans and Mexicans had no conflict. Until you showed up with your hurricane, bringing devastation, endless winds of war and death like Hurricane Sandy. So now that you hurt, can you feel the pain and the suffering? Can you begin to understand that when you hear black folks talking, it is not hate speech. It is the same type of speech when you suffer from being a victim of Hurricane Sandy. We speak from our hurt and pain from living in a racist society, the hurricane of racism, injustice, inequality. You don't see the similarities, but the result is still the same. So how can... So why do you feel as though people should feel sorry for you when you don't feel sorry? This was an act of nature, Hurricane Sandy. 
But what happened to dark people all over the earth was man-made. You did it on purpose. And you did not rebuild what you destroyed. Hurricane Sandy, you can't expect Hurricane Sandy to rebuild nothing. And you say that you have changed, that you are not like your father, but you continue to do the same type of activity. Osama bin Laden is an example of that. Osama bin Laden was murdered without a trial with no evidence and you if you were a good person good people then you would say you would feel sorrow man I we, we really didn't want to do that to Osama but he gave us no choice but you celebrate death you celebrate destruction the blowing up of bodies and bombing I am like the fiction of Moses of the Bible that continue to bring you warning. I'm very sure that Moses did not and felt sorrow when he saw the deaths of the first sons and the plagues. But when it's all said and done, Moses had to obey God and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. So I'm telling you, those who are in power in this nation, y'all need to leave black folks alone and let us decide on our, on our own what we need to do and stay out of our business. Let them go. Teach the black people the truth for a change. Otherwise, Hurricane Sandy will be the least of your problems. There's time for a change because the God and time has dictated that you, the new modern pharaoh, must let this people go. This is just one of many plagues. And you have been warned not only by black folks, but by other people.